this will support rural consumption. The rebound in contact intensive services is expected to sustain urban consum consumption. Our surveys suggest further improvement in consumer confidence and households optimism for the outlook a uh, year ahead. Business sentiment remains a bit according to early results of our surveys. Nevertheless, the negative spillovers from geopolitical tensions, elevated international commodity prices, rising input costs, tightening of global financial conditions, and slowdown in world economy continue to weigh on the outlook. Taking all these factors into consideration, the real GDP growth for 2022-23, that is for the current year, is retained at 7.2%, with Q1 at 16.2%, Q2 at 6.2%, Q3 at 4.1%, and Q4 at 4%, with risks broadly balanced. I would now like to focus a little more on inflation. The CPI headline inflation in April registered a further sharp increase to 7.8%. It was the fourth consecutive month when inflation touched or was above the upper tolerance level of 6%. The surge in headline inflation was seen across all major categories. The global geopolitical situation remains fluid and commodity markets remain on the edge rendering heightened uncertainty to domestic inflation outlook. Certain positive developments on the prices front in recent weeks may help to ease the acute price pressures to some extent. These would include expectations of a normal southwest monsoon and Kharif agricultural season, the recent supply side measures taken by the government and the unfolding of their impact lifting of palm oil export ban by a major supplying country that is Indonesia and signs of moderation in global industrial metal price indices. Our quick survey of urban households undertaken after the excise duty cuts of petrol and diesel on May 21st shows that shows a significant moderation in inflation expectations of the urban households. And we notice declines of 190 basis points in their three month ahead expectations and 90 basis points in their one year ahead expectations. In such a scenario, further reduction of state VATs on petrol and diesel across the country can certainly contribute to softening the inflationary pressures as well as the inflationary expectations. Notwithstanding these positive developments, upside risks to inflation do persist. These risks emanate from elevated commodity prices, revisions in electricity tariffs across many states, high domestic poultry and animal feed costs, continuing trade and supply chain bottlenecks, rising pass-through of input costs to selling prices in the manufacturing and services sectors, the recent spike in tomato prices which are adding to fuel inflation and most important of all, the elevated international crude prices.